Welcome to the Valve Studio. This is part seven in the final segment of my interview with Willie, aka Lord Valve. Uh, we got up from his bench and we walked around his, uh, his shop there. And he goes into some of the designs that he has, ma mainly his napper amplifiers, his nipper amplifiers, and a couple other little projects he's working on. It's, it's fun to see him in his element. Uh, you can tell that this man has got passion, he, even at his age, he still loves doing tube amplifier designs. Uh, and then I kind of walk around a little bit and show you some other aspects of NBS Electronics there on Broadway in Denver. Uh, so this is the last segment. If you haven't watched one through six, why don't you sit back and uh, gain some knowledge from uh, a guy who's been working on tube amplifiers for more than 50 years. All right, let's turn it over to Lord Valve. So Willie's turned on the lights here in the in the NBS Electronics, and uh, I was looking around, and uh, looks like this is the showroom. <laughs> this is the junk heap. Yeah, there's stuff laying around here. This, this I built a lot of these. I don't want to say a lot of them. I built five or six of them. This is a 1956 Fender Tweed Pro clone to the original spec. Beautiful sounding amp, it's 22 watts. This is my 44 watt napper with the 15 and it's got the same preamp in it as the 12 inch napper which is my most popular one. But it's got a, uh, a 6L6 output stage uh, running at uh, higher voltage with bigger bigger iron and stuff in it. Really great sounding amp. Um, every jazz guy that plays this wants it until they find out how much it costs. And this is the this one little one right down here, a bunch of crud piled in front of it. That's the 12 inch napper, 24 watt with a 12 inch speaker. That's the most popular one. This is the little nipper. Uh, it originally started out to be the same size as a Champ, and that is a Champ chassis, Vibro Champ chassis. But I decided to make it a little taller so I could put a 10 inch speaker in it. And this is about 16 watts. Same preamp as the uh, the two nappers, except no reverb. Uh, in order to put reverb in here, I would have had to use one of those nine-inch tanks, and I can't stand them. They're, they don't have enough reverb. They're too boingy sounding. I don't like them. They're, okay. If I can't use a full-size tank, I'm not using it. That's it. I'm, I'll just tell the guy get a pedal. Mm. That there, that's a. Uh, 112 Blues Breaker, JTM 45 chassis. I built this for a guy down in Colorado Springs. He hadn't come to pick it up yet. And this is the, the floor model. Uh, same thing, JTM 45 head. Uh, this is out of China. Don't don't photograph that. No, I don't carry Chinese stuff. Man. <laughs> you know, but I can sell this for less than 300 bucks and guys that want a tube amp. You know? Oh, all right. Well, let's not bring that one in. Really? Um, this this thing here is really cool. This is the two banger. Now I, my buddy next door, uh, who owns the effects pedal shop, took this in on a trade. It's a '68 Bandmaster, and it was totally encrusted with laundry detergent. It had been sitting in somebody's basement next to their washing machine for like 25 years. And he said, "Oh, can you make this good?" I said, "No, forget it. You know, it's never going to be anything more than what it is. It's a pile of crap." So he gave it to me, and I scraped all the stuff off it, you know, and the, the guts were rotted. So I just ripped them out and threw them away. And what I built was, I built a super reverb here, okay, with a super reverb output transformer, a super reverb power transformer, and over here is a champ. There's two separate amplifiers in this head, completely <laughs> separate. They both have their own standby switch, their own uh, impedance switches, their own controls, they're completely separate from each other. They do share a power transform. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there's a surprising uh, degree of isolation between them. They don't interact very much at all. So two guys could play these two amplifiers, two, two different speakers at the same same time. What we wound up doing with it was hooking the uh, super side, which is about 40 watts, no reverb, uh, into a Marshall 412 box, and we hooked the champ side into a 210 box that we had laying around and it set the super side really clean and just 
railed the champ completely and why the guitar and the two things that was the most amazing tone you could possibly imagine you know so I'm going to be building these it won't look like this at all okay because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a a twin reverb head cabinet and I'm actually going to put a couple of six inch speakers in it so the champ can drive them and then it can drive an external cabinet so you, you can take this back to the <clears throat> motel and practice with it you know, you know. <clears throat> and you're going to call it a two banger that's the two banger yeah and uh this little dude there is the Tina P. Jr. That is, uh, it's got two 5881s in it and a 5 ar 4 It's a Pro Jr. Again, the guy next door took it in on a trade and he said, uh, man, this thing sounds like ass. Can you do anything to it? I said, well, it just sounds like ass because it is what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and I took it back and I tried all these tweaks. I looked up stuff on the internet and said, nothing could make that thing sound good. And so I just said, Forget it, here's 50 bucks, I own it now. I just gutted everything out of it and threw it away and I built what amounts to a 5E3 with reverb. Mm -hmm. But it has something really unique that I uh, actually did some other cool stuff with. Let's see, I should have one laying here. I usually got one hanging around here somewhere. Let me see, because I want to show you this. Well, I've got boxes and boxes of them. There we go. I got a bunch of these surplus one time. This is a, what they call a sub-miniature tube. Now these have been prepped so they can be plugged into IC sockets. But when they come, they have long leads sticking out of them. They don't have pins. Mm -hmm. They're designed to be soldered directly into the circuit little bitty guy like this, okay? And I cut the leads off and soldered them into an IC socket. So you can plug them into an IC socket. So right, right. And this is a dual triode. It's it's just about exactly the same thing as a 12AY7. So that's what the input tube in that little lamp right there is. That's called the Tina P Junior. T I N A. Okay. P Junior, as in this is not a pro junior. Okay, that the, that's where that the, came from. Following along the same lines of naming the napper, yes. right, right. Not a Princeton Reaver. Um, that still runs at uh, this 250 volt tube there. This here? Yeah. What do you uh, end up running it around? Yeah, I'm running it at. Uh, I think I'm running it over spec. I think specs like 120. I'm running it like 200. Okay. Tubes are basically, you know, the specs, they don't care really. You can abuse the crap out of them. As long as you don't let them pull too much current, they don't really care that much. Is and uh, that also inspired this little gizmo right here, which is the Rugulator. This is an effects pedal that has one of those tubes in it. Yeah. Cool, huh? It runs on a 24 volt laptop supply. That's what you're running in over here. Okay. Yeah. And you're able to to, to uh, what does this actually do then? Is this just a? Uh, it's a it's an, a boost and overdrive. Okay. Whatever you know. Everybody who plays this says, "Wow, it sounds like an amplifier." And the you know the tone and stuff here, it's very similar to what you'd find in like an old Tweed Fender. Mm -hmm. With your bright it's, switch there as well. It's got yeah, it's got a really oh yeah this is a bright switch, uh, it's got a really fine tone. You can actually track direct to tape with this, and people people would bet you money that you used an amplifier. Oh, just run that right into the mixer. Yeah, and then that thing there, that's the fuzz butt. That's a direct clone of Jimi Hendrix's 1968 Dallas Arbiter fuzz face. Guy brought one in for me to fix one day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I looked at it and I said, wow, there's almost no parts in here. I'm going to build these. So I've sold quite a few of both of these pedals. Good, good. There's quite a place you got in here. Oh, I see you got an owl up here taking care of business. Oh, yeah, the owl, uh, he, was, he was like on top of this nightclub we were installing a sound system in back when I was doing a lot of that. He was up on the top on the roof. Uh, 
the deal was he was supposed to scare away the pigeons. Well, you couldn't hardly tell he was an owl because he had so much pigeon shit on him, he just looked like a heap of stuff. So we rescued him, we blew him off the car wash and we put him up in there. And somebody told me that gypsies will not rob a place that's guarded by an owl. Oh. That's been, he's been up there 23 years and so far we haven't been robbed by gypsies, so <laughs> it probably works. <laughs> You have a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, the rest of this, I mean, all these boxes and boxes and boxes back here, all filled with tubes. Well, that's all right. I got a phone right over here. There's a million phones in here. I don't like to be too far from here. Well, Willie was saved by the bell. Fortunately, we were done with our interview. Let me show you a few more uh, photos from around his shop. This is this is his tube burn-in station. It's old amplifiers, and uh, he basically plugs tubes in here and runs them uh, from between 12 and 48 hours longer for output tubes. He says that if you take a new tube out of a box and you want to bias it right then, what's going to happen is it's going to drift over the initial burn-in. So he uh, uh, gets around that by burns in all the tubes before he does any biasing on his amplifiers. Here's his workbench. Uh, there's not really that much specialized test equipment. There's a couple pieces there in the, in the middle that we'll zoom in in just a minute, but he has a scope there on the left, a utility amplifier right up in the upper left there, handheld voltmeters. He does have a fan to blow smoke, the uh, solder smoke off his uh, work, and he uses LED lights. He says that uh, he's got a lot of really nice lights now, and they don't heat up his uh, shop or his workbench like they used to. These pieces in the middle, that thing on the left is a variac with a voltage and ammeter uh, gauges on there. And we're going to move over here to the right. This is a Sorensen AC voltage regulator. It allows him to have a very, very constant AC line voltage so that he can bias his amplifiers correctly. He uses uh, handheld voltmeters. He does have three bench meters. Um, but they weren't actually connected up when I was there. So here's a shot from Willie's bench looking out towards the front of his store. That's the main entrance on uh, Broadway in Denver. And customers kind of snake their way through racks of equipment, boxes of components, stacks of amplifiers, and they kind of work their way back and they find Willie working at his workbench, much like you saw during this interview. When you look around NBS Electronics, you'll see boxes like this, full of tubes, full of wire, full of capacitors, full of resistors, full of knobs. He has pretty much everything you need. If you're going to work on your amplifier from scratch, you need to modify the one you have or do maintenance on it or work on a friend's. If you need anything, either vintage or new, you should give him a call. Chances are he has it. Here's some transformer sitting on a shelf somewhere. What I kind of found amazing was that uh, during the interview, we got about four or five phone calls, and he spent about five to ten minutes on these calls, uh, basically doing customer education. And I don't know if it's going to amount to sales for him, but it doesn't matter. That's the kind of businessman that he is. So I'd like to thank Willie for his time he spent today. Uh, we were talked for about two and a half hours. He's a very busy man. And yet he took the time out to talk about tube amplifier design and, and, and uh, let us a glimpse of his uh, vast wisdom for 50 years of amplifiers. If you found this valuable, I think you should call him and thank him for this. Or at least send him some email saying, hey, Willie, thanks. I learned a lot from uh, this conversation you had. I want to thank Willie for his time today. This is the Valve Studio. Thanks for watching.